considered the masterwork of great British author Robert Louis Stevenson, the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, often shortened to just Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, is a beloved classic of Gothic literature that speaks to not just great mystery and supernatural storytelling, but endures as a short novel that represents the duality of human beings, our composed, tactfully crafted public personas, and our dark, primal, sometimes even evil urges that underscore our societies and the narratives that prop them up and maintain civil order. Robert Louis Stevenson was born in Edinburgh, Scotland on November 13, 1850. His father's side of the family were a line of lighthouse engineers. His mother's side of the family were gentry. Stevenson was born with weak lungs and was subject to illness much of his life. This impeded his formal education. Nonetheless, his nurse would read him religious stories as well as ghost tales. At a young age, he became enthusiastic about writing stories. Stevenson traveled widely throughout his life, partly for adventure and partly for his health. He had tuberculosis. He visited the United States, traveled through Europe, and even sailed the South Pacific. He used his adventures as inspirations for his works, like Treasure Island. Stevenson's breakthrough as a writer came with the publication of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. The story came to Stevenson in a dream in 1885, and he wrote the entire novella in only a few days. It sold 40,000 copies in the first six months and has since become a classic. Stevenson died on December 3, 1894, in Samoa. Now, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde falls under the Gothic movement, and specifically, Gothic horror fiction. Unlike romantic writers who focused on natural beauty, writers of the Gothic movement focused their attention on death and the irrational. Their works carry dark and mysterious tones, both literally and symbolically. Structurally, these novels only offer glimpses of perspective, leaving it up to the reader to weave together information and draw conclusions. Furthermore, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde comments on Victorian morality, especially its contradictions as it relates to poverty, crime, sex, and class conduct. The idea of evolution also contributes to the novel's characters, most notably Mr. Hyde. Fifteen years before Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Charles Darwin published The Descent of Man. The idea that humans carry animalistic and primitive traits crept into literature, and in the novella, Hyde is described as troglodytic or ape-like and is driven by primitive desires. Although there is no explicit homosexuality in the novella, Stevenson alludes to perceptions of homosexuality in 1800s England. To Utterson, as well as readers from the time, the relationship between Jekyll and Hyde would look like a homosexual affair. Throughout the novella, Jekyll's suspicious actions point to this, leaving everything in his will to Hyde, giving Hyde keys to his home, with the appearance of being blackmailed or exposed. People are already making suspicious connections between the two men. The story opens with Utterson and Enfield on a walk one Sunday night. Enfield tells Utterson that Mr. Hyde trampled a girl and bribed her parents. Utterson goes home to see his client, Dr. Jekyll, and sees that he's left everything to the strange Hyde. He visits Jekyll's science partner, Lanyon, who tells him that he and Jekyll no longer work together. Utterson goes to check on Jekyll, who isn't home, and Jekyll's servant tells him Hyde has keys. Later, Jekyll hosts a dinner. Utterson inquires, but Jekyll assures him he won't see Hyde again. A year later, it is found Hyde has murdered a man, one of Utterson's clients. He goes to Jekyll's to make sure he's not hiding Hyde. Jekyll gives him a forged letter. Utterson visits Lanyon, who has fallen deathly ill after a shock, but he won't talk about it. Now after Lanyon's death, Utterson tries repeatedly to visit Jekyll, but Jekyll still refuses to see him. He and Enfield go on a walk and talk to Jekyll through his window. Poole, Jekyll's servant, visits Utterson and tells him something is wrong with Jekyll. They go to his house. A strange voice comes from Jekyll's lab, insisting the men don't enter. Utterson and Poole break down the door to find Hyde dying from ingesting poison. They find letters revealing the truth about the two men being the same. The narrative shifts to Lanyon, who reveals how he saw Hyde transform into Jekyll. 
The last chapter is a letter from Dr. Jekyll explaining how he invented a potion that turned him into his uncivilized, primitive side, Mr. Hyde. Darkness symbolizes evil, sin, and crime all throughout the novella. Houses symbolize the psyche of their owners. Doors symbolize passageways into the mind. The walking stick symbolizes identity as a gentleman. Clothing for Jekyll and Hyde symbolizes Hyde's underdevelopment and half-being. There are a number of key themes in Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Good and evil recur throughout the novella. Good is civil public life, bad desires and passions. The most obvious divided self is Dr. Jekyll. He consciously and literally splits himself into two people so he can retain the good reputation of his public self, Jekyll, while indulging his dark passions, Hyde. Self-control is represented through Utterson and Enfield, practicing their own forms of self-control as gentlemen. Jekyll himself uses science so he doesn't have to. Class dictates how characters should behave and how they are tied to expectations. Inquiry how different characters go about seeking the truth, if they seek it at all, is a key part of the entire mystery. At once an engrossing story and a study of the human condition, Stevenson's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde presents an engaging paradox, the conflict between our public and private personas. A bestseller upon its initial release, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde has entered the lexicon of common nomenclature to such an extent that we compare those in a sudden bad mood to the title characters of the novella. It has maintained a constant and powerful influence upon popular culture the world over.